This video is sponsored by Brilliant. You likely know this already. Finland has selected the F-35 to replace the legacy Ornet. Map. You likely know this already. Finland has selected the F-35 to replace the... Ah! <laughs> Well, you likely know this already, Finland has selected the F-35 to replace the Legacy Hornets. The F-35A came out on top of a competition including, at least at the beginning, the F-15, the F-18 Super Hornet, the F-16 in one of the latest heavily modified versions, uh, the Gripen, the Rafale and the Eurofighter. On the 10th of December 2021, the Finnish government had officially announced the decision and gave the mandate to the appropriate national offices to start the negotiation to sign a contract with Lockheed Martin and Pratt and & Whitney to buy 64 F-35s with a complement of Amrams and Sidewinders plus a training, spare and maintenance package. The aircraft are going to be among the first Block 4 aircraft to be delivered and deliveries are expected to start in 2025 and end around 2030 or 31. But the interesting thing is that the Finnish government has released quite a lot of the documentation about this selection. Obviously in Finnish language. But with the help of Google Translate I could sift through a number of PDFs and I found some really interesting stuff. The acquisition cost of the 64 aircraft is 4.7 billion euros, which is about just 50% of the entire program. 0.75 billions are budgeted for air-to-air -air weapons, air-to-air -air only. 2.4 billions are the cost of maintenance equipment, spares and training aids, while the pure cost of the maintenance for the period 2025-2030 is expected to be 0.5 billions. With these numbers, the cost of acquiring a single aircraft is about 73 million euros, that is 84 million dollars. Quite higher than the last reported cost, which was 78 million dollars. Yet, despite this increase in the document, they still declare that the F-35 is going to be cheaper than the European alternatives or the legacy American fighters. However, to this unit acquisition cost, you may want to add the share of the 2.4 millions that are budgeted to establish the local support infrastructure. Give or take is about 50% of the aircraft cost. You do the math. This kind of costs are usually overlooked when evaluating this kind of programs, but as you can see, they're definitely not negligible. And the assets that you're going to acquire with this money is as important as the aircraft itself. Without these assets, the aircraft cannot operate. They are a prerequisite. Without those, the aircraft can't even take off. This is not a specific F-35 characteristic, obviously. It is universal. Every aircraft has its own logistic tail. But in this case, as you can see, it's quite heavy. And one may even say that the best way of shooting down an F-35 is probably destroying all these assets on the ground. Well, it is a matter of logic. And if you're interested in improving your logical reasoning, well, you should pay attention to the sponsor of this video brilliant so brilliant is a platform where you can interactively learn about stem topics for example i took the opportunity of this video to go through the logic course and it was really interesting and it went straight to the point it's really teaching you how to think and how to approach problem solving in a generalized way. There are plenty of courses, they are clear, they are intuitive, they are for all ability and knowledge levels. You can actually progress from a very basic knowledge to a rather advanced level. And in general, they are all useful to improve your problem solving skills, which is something that we all need. Anyway, you can join the millions of people who are already learning on Brilliant by taking advantage of the special offer that Brilliant put forward just for this video. In fact, the first 200 viewers 
to click on the link below will have a 20% discount on the price and that's an interesting offer even though Brilliant is really not expensive. Thank you Brilliant for reaching out and now back to the video. The program includes 0.77 billion of external costs generated by the program, but not covered by the budget of the program itself. I was a bit surprised to learn that 0.4 billion, those 0.77, are dedicated to real estate. This should be the cost of the construction of a local spare and maintenance center, but the document is otherwise pretty generic on what is going to be built, with one exception. It mentions structures required on air bases for chemical, explosive and environmental safety. I'm actually wondering if the F-35 requires some sort of specific infrastructure on the airbase that the Finns don't have. I don't expect the Finnish climate to be a problem in this respect because it should have been already addressed with the F-18. Well, this is a small mystery and, well, the comments below are open to everyone, so if you have any detail or if you have any hypothesis, just please let me know and if there's anything interesting, I will be happy to come back on this subject. The contract that is going to be negotiated now is going to include an agreement between the Finnish government, Lockheed Martin and Pratt & Whitney for up to 30% of industrial cooperation. This means that Lockheed Martin and Pratt & Whitney will agree to purchase goods and services from Finland for a value not inferior to the 30% of the entire value of the program in the 10 years for following the signature of the contract. A large part of this compensation is made by the production of some aircraft structural parts in Finland and the management of the spares and maintenance center. The impact on the Finnish economy is expected to be around 6,000 jobs. You may not be familiar with this type of agreement, but these are really commonplace. For example, Saab establishing a factory in Brazil for the production of the Gripen is a form of industrial cooperation. The anomaly here is that the agreement is very low, in the sense that 80% or even 100% of the value are pretty common. And this seems to be a feature of the F-35 programs, because even in Japan there are constant headaches because of the low participation of the local industry to the program. The industrial cooperation agreements are a fascinating subject that actually explain some strange decisions in terms of weapon acquisition. They will deserve a video on their own and we will definitely make one in the future. The Finnish document goes to great lengths in describing the financial and political motivations of the choice, but the military reasons are, well, understandably very generic and not really detailed. It basically says that the aircraft was fit for purpose, with very little additional details. However, it is interesting to notice that the contract will include AMRAMs and sidewinders, but no air-to-ground weapons. And then the document sort of contradicts itself because it says that the aircraft has been chosen because it was excellent in air-to-air -air performance and excellent in air-to-ground performance. So basically it has been chosen for everything. Well, it seems that the Finnish military has a very high opinion of the F-35. However, I believe that the choice of including air-to-air -air weapons right from the start is because the current air-to-ground inventory is still usable on the F-35, but the air-to-air -air inventory is made of legacy versions of the Amram and the Sidewinder, and they can definitely not be used inside the base of the F-35. The document doesn't specify quantities, but it's reasonable to expect that there are going to be a few hundreds of the versions that are going to be current when they will be delivered. But the Finns mention another point that they consider a key advantage of the F-35. The F-35 doesn't need a targeting pod. Everything is permanently installed and integrated. I have to confess I never thought about this point, which in hindsight is actually pretty obvious, so well. 
Since teapots are relatively complex systems and quite expensive, this kind of arrangement eliminates the need to acquire a um, substantial asset. The flip side is that it's easier to integrate new technologies in a pod rather than in the aircraft. In fact, external pods have been a convenient way of improving the aircraft performance for decades. Just consider what the Lantern did for the F-15 of the F-16, where they opened up an entire class of missions that could not be executed before. When I read this point on the Finnish documentation, it was one of those light bulb moments that made me consider the F-35 in a different light. In fact, many countries may want to add their own technologies to the aircraft, or they just want to add a type of technology that is better suited for their national requirements. In this case, it would be more difficult. Well, I guess it is always possible to go back to Lockheed Martin and ask for the integration, but I suspect it is an expensive, long and winding road. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you to you for watching it. Please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me and see you next time.